All right, what's up, guys? We're back with another podcast episode. Hope you guys had a great week. We've got some fun topics to talk about this week. We're going to be talking about alternatives to some of the most popular paddles on the market, uh, kind of how the pickleball paddle market works, our YOLA event that we went to, and a handful of other things. We can talk about good time. that. We can talk well, about that yet? A little bit. Did you bit. get the clearing? Did you get the, the okay <laughs> from the people at yola to talk about that event because they were very clear at that event they're like don't be talking about don't be leaking any of this stuff out they They definitely put the fear of god in everyone at that event i think they begged for one of us talks yeah because we get to see you for like you know 10 mil 20 mil i was like well you can try but i ain't got i got had enough of that to go around i still (laughs) was like i ain't got those assets (laughs) yeah exactly i owe you already like 10 mil from all the I don't know the little things you'd be billing me for, you know, that you'd be invoicing That's me right. for. Yeah, all your That's advice, right. equipment, being on this pod, apparently. Friendship. <laughs> this friendship's <Yeah>. not free. <laughs> is there a subscription model for that friendship? That, is that it is kind it of is? a subscription model. That's oh, what wow. it is. <laughs> oh, that's what that extra like payment that comes out of my card every single month is. Oh, I see. I didn't know. I should have known. Didn't want to tell 3. you. 3.5 something, and I was like, oh, okay, huh. What with that you is. know, actually, speaking of that, I just have a random tangent story that I'm going to tell really quick now. When we were at the YOLA event, uh-huh. I was looking at my budgeting app that I use called YNAB, and it auto imports <laughs> all my bank budget. transactions and yada, yada. It's a budgeting app. It's great. Mm-hmm. But on one of my cards, my credit cards, which I never use, like it, I actually think nothing goes on it anymore. I noticed there was a charge and I was like, what is this? And it was Netflix. And I was like, Okay, I technically did have Netflix build on this a couple months ago, but I canceled it. And I was like, that's weird. Well, long story short, I realized that I had canceled correctly and that there was a fraudulent charge. And when I Googled it, I was like Netflix scam or something. It was like this. It happens through Brazil all the time, apparently. But they like I don't. It's very unclear to me how they get the information, but somehow they bill your credit card through Netflix, and then the only reason I was thrown off is that there was a foreign transaction fee, and I was like, why is Netflix billing me a foreign transaction fee? <laughs> but all that to say, I just thought it was funny when you said like, oh, that's what that charge is every month, and I like oh, okay. just went through this because I was like, wait, that charge isn't correct. I was like, I don't have Netflix. Okay, well, maybe I'll go through my credit card statements now and take a look. Maybe this was... <laughs> a foreign transaction fee or something or some scam that was going on. Obviously I was just kidding. Cause that doesn't happen, but okay. dude, now I, I'll mean, be more when I thought about it, that scam would be like a good one to run because one people, bunch of people have Netflix and two, the vast majority of people aren't checking like credit card statements to see what got billed. So I'm like, people dude. would have no idea. Or if they did see it, they probably wouldn't even think twice. Imagine, imagine if some scammer got out there got like some sort of email list or something or information from our audience who like purchases every single paddle that you make a good review on and then it's like in their credit card statements like pickleball paddle like you know so, okay yeah that sounds about right yeah i purchased this pickleball one, like, central yeah i bought a 200 dollar yeah. paddle <laughs> yeah <laughs> jeez louise don't give people any ideas <laughs> okay yeah you're right. right you could edit that part out just kidding yeah. <laughs> all right okay. so first thing we're gonna talk about yola event unfortunately mm. guys we can't talk really any details. specifics about the event, but we will though eventually. Are you gonna do a vlog? Are you gonna are you, you do a vlog on it or not? Uh, uh. I don't know. Since we couldn't post anything right after the event, I'm like, eh, we'll see. Like maybe, maybe not. You, uh, right. Did you even film much there? No. Besides I, what, like we used my cameras for? Yeah, no. We I barely filmed anything because they said, oh, you can't release anything. Like now, I was like, okay, well, what's the point? I'm just going to wait for the paddles to release, and when the embargo is lifted, then I'll make stuff. And also, I'm not going to lie to you, I was like in somewhat of a mood like that whole entire week, in the prior week. I don't know why, but there was a part of me that was like, man, I don't necessarily, not that I didn't want to be there, but it was like, but that was kind of like the feeling. It's like, okay, this is the event. We saw it. I'm kind of like over it. I'm ready to go. That was kind of wow. Well, you were good at hiding it because I actually don't think I noticed anything that your <laughs> well, mood good. like seemed like I I feel like I'm pretty in tune with that now because I've definitely been able to tell when you're off. So you did a better job hiding it this time. Okay. No, I mean, I, mean, I tried. Well, part of it was because like, you know, obviously it was the reunion between you, me, Q, 
and Braden, and of course, you know, Brian from Building Pickleball was there. It was good seeing everybody, to be quite honest, and all the creators. And it was a, you know, cool space, cool venue, but yeah. like, you know, there was certain events and certain interactions that kind of pulled me out of it. But there's other times where I was just sitting there. I was like, all right, what's next? How am I sure. going to get through this day? You know what I mean? Sure. But other than that, yeah, I mean, I had a good time. I could say that I had a good time. That's yeah, it. no, it was for sure a good time. But basically, guys, like I said, there will be, you know, the paddles will launch at some point, but they will they will be worth waiting for. They will definitely be paddles like I won't be surprised if this is the most this like launch is the most popular paddle of the year. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I like yeah, I would agree with that. I think I mean if not if not the most like successful the most popular launch of the year definitely in like the top two or three because i mean who knows there's still yeah. a half a year left and you know we've been surprised before like we're gonna we're about I mean, to talk I guess about the gearbox paddle surprised us last year exactly that's what i'm saying and i mean we're about to talk about the paddle market and you and i both know how crazy you know the paddle market goes i mean you had that one year where Sel- when selkirk wasn't doing anything and they they came out like the half the end half of that year like super strong this too and we might be surprised some other people might surprise us is what i'm trying to say so i wouldn't put it past yeah. all the other companies in the pick in, in the paddle market to like release other crazy stuff for the rest of the year because there's still a lot of this year left you know but, yeah it'll be it'll be very interesting but the when we all got to step on the court at the event i felt like the whole building yeah you could just tell everyone was like oh like yeah dang <laughs> yeah it was dang but it was also i was also so it wasn't i don't know i was a little scared too like because these yeah these paddles were like crazy <laughs> right and yeah. hopefully i could say that but like they were I'll just have and, isaac bleep that <laughs> Or, or, no, you can't. <laughs> just in, just in case. Oh my God. <laughs> Look, I don't want to get hit with the Yola lawsuit. <laughs> no, he's not gonna hit you with the Yola lawsuit. Just, just I'll I'll text Tom. It'll be go okay. after Will's assets, not mine. Go after yeah, Will's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go uh, go after me. I'll talk to Tom. It's okay. I'll I don't have Tom a house to take. Will has a house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, yeah, we we were definitely, I think, impressed, but also, I don't know if we're allowed to like say this but the the versions they gave us were was the alpha versions there wasn't the final version with you know the final production version with you know the aesthetics and everything right so yeah. i think i'm still reserving my opinion and my judgment until i get to really hit the commercialized like you know versions that are for the public you know what i mean because yep. they could for have sure. selected yeah they could have selectedly um been more selective with the paddles that they gave us to to demo at the event right so for sure yeah so but but still whatever they give us and if there's anything close to that it'll it'll be nuts it'll be nuts and i don't know if it's necessarily in a good way (laughs) i'm very similar in that i mean obviously it's early impressions i've gotten to do a handful of sessions um since that and then one at home and i've been very impressed but obviously i feel like more and more with paddles i'm like ooh. You definitely got to wait and see if anything changes or if anything breaks, yada, yada, yada. So yeah, we'll yeah. see. Uh, of course, like these are early impressions, but from those early impressions, I am especially, I'm very impressed. And it's a big contrast to last year with the Perseus. Which you were not impressed. Very at underwhelmed with. I see. Yeah. You're- <laughs> Even at the event, I was like, okay, like this is fine, but. It's like too late, too late. I see this one. It's not too late. <laughs> yeah, they're not even ahead. close to too late. Yeah, they're ahead of the curve or like right on the curve. I would say. Yeah, yep. yeah. So yeah, very very impressed. People are gonna want to wait for these. I think they will be, they will be all over the place. All over. Did you do any other fun things hit with any, uh, anyone or have any cool games while you were there at the event? I mean, we got to we got to play with a bunch of us and you know just have some fun playing pickleball or whatever nothing yeah. insane but it we was had, it was a good time i had some good, good times some good games with some of the other uh content creators i got to play with keith um yep. uh, from pickleball party shout out to keith and of course brian from building pickleball i got to play with the uh pickleball clinic guys aaron and matt dude they're ripping 
footballs. Me and Keith played against Aaron and Matt. I actually, I filmed that. I'm going to, I'm going to post that up somewhere or I'm going to give it to um, Matt and Aaron from the pickleball clinic. Maybe they'll do something with the post up, but you know, those guys were high level tennis players. And with these pals, they were ripping them. I was like, Oh my gosh. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And then one last fun thing that I did was with uh, Sheena Chin from pickleball on ice. I don't know if you've seen some of her, like reels or clips like she's literally playing pickleball or i guess like touch tennis like on ice skates on the on the ice it's really cool so i got to play with her we we did this one game where we played um on a pickleball court with pickleball and pickleball paddles but with tennis rules like so you serve overhead there's no two bounce rule and there's no kitchen and it was mayhem (laughs) dude i bet that was insane i can't even imagine what that was like it was absolutely insane the balls were flying so fast you basically had to guess and as soon as you like you touch the ball the points are done in like maybe three hits what was the hardest part of that was it returning the serve was it the volley after the serve return it was honestly it's like the third shot like serving is good like serving is easy like i mean you're in a smaller you know cord and once you kind of get the toss down and if you played some tennis like really easy in my opinion and then returning is not as hard as you would think you kind of just have to kind of guess and you have to like short hop it a little bit because you can get some wicked slice and you can get way more angles because now you're making contact with the ball at a much higher level above the net so you can get really wide but once you kind of get that the next part is really just uh the third shot and like the guessing and the volleys after because like in doubles tennis you know you play with the doubles alley right and so this and there's technically no doubles alley so they can just come and crowd the net and if you don't <laughs> it's something they're they're just like stick their paddle in front of them and it's it's gone it's absolutely wait so gone. did you play it like tennis too where the server's partner is at the net yeah heck yeah oh gosh so you've just got two volleyers right at the net immediately with so no kitchen it, exactly so it's funny because you have like when if i'm serving my partner is up at the net and he's poaching or she's poaching everything right so the returner basically has to do a guess like do i go cross court or do i go down the line but also because the return can come back so fast and so hard sometimes the person that is like okay do, how how good am i feeling should i play back and then i'll have time to rip like a fourth shot back at them so it's kind of like you kind of have to pick your poison a little bit, you know? I want to try this. This sounds like fun. Yeah, definitely wear eye protection for this for sure. Like, Yeah? Oh, oh yeah, dude. Best wear eye protection because you're at the net. There's no kitchen and like these yeah. balls are coming at you. You know what I'm saying? So definitely wear eye protection for this. Like, All right. But it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I want to try it. I wish I had gotten to try that there. That sounds like a ton of fun. I, I was thinking I would try and do this again, but I would actually make some quote unquote doubles alleys to make the the court a little wide or like make a large like area on the four corners wide on the four corners of each of uh, on, on the court. So this is like a space that you kind of have to defend, you know, like you can go for it or not, you know, to, to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, but it was very fun. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, you should give it a shot. Cool. I know. cool. Sounds fun to me. I uh, Shortly after, so I was a psycho when I got back home, at, which was on Wednesday. And I got home. I landed around 4.50, probably got home around 5.20 p.m. And you went and then to we go have, play pickleball. I did. An oh, hour man. later, <laughs> I went to play pickleball because I was like, you we have fiend. this weekly league and mm-hmm. I was like, I got to go. I was like, I try to go every week. And I was like, this is such a bad. I was so tired. And I could tell I didn't feel sick yet, but I could kind of tell my body was like, something's not right here. But I was like, I'm going to go play anyways. And funny enough, actually, the first game I played. So it's a ladder league, right? So yeah. you play two rounds. There's five people on your court. Uh, you play through that round. The two people with the highest points move up a court. Two with the lowest move down. And the fifth one stays, or whoever was in the middle. So I said to my partner, I was like, okay, dude, I just got off a plane. I'm tired. I don't feel that great. And I'm playing with a brand new paddle. So Mm -hmm. don't have any expectations for me. Dude, I played so well that night. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the paddle. I don't know if it was me. But I... Combination. 
And you played probably you played with high level player like throughout the whole entire event. Like you played with me, Braden. Did you get games in with Ben Johns? I don't know if I would say that any of those guys were high level people, especially that last name you mentioned. I don't know <laughs> if that's high level pickleball. <laughs> yeah, I'm of just course kidding. not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll just forget the number one player in the world. Uh-huh. Um, but mm-hmm. no, so I I came back. I went up that night and then made it to the highest court I've ever made it, which is one off from the highest. And like. Those top two courts are basically the pro courts for the most part. Like those are all the guys that are like either playing pro or right at the pro level. So I had like Omric, Onik, all these guys. I might have played great on that court beforehand. Yeah. But I got waxed, waxed hard. And I knew it was coming. (laughs) Like I knew that I wasn't going to do well, but I was like, geez. This Dang. is not fun. <laughs> wax on, wax off. You got Mr. Miyagi. Shoot. Rough Dude, life. for real. So all that to say, the Yola is not going to save you even even against the best of players. So just be <laughs> warned. But it was great. But right after that, dude, the next day, I was like, I feel like trash. I was huh. not fully sick. I kept taking like vitamin C and zinc and all these other things or whatever. And my body basically kept like, here's how it would work. During the day, I felt decent, but not great. Evening, I would feel bad. Wake up, take my vitamin C, feel good, repeat. Now uh, I'm at the point where I'm like over it, but the whole you're hovering on the Thursday line. to now sucked. I didn't play any pickleball. It was hard to work. Like I hate getting sick because it just throws everything off. Yeah, not only that, but also traveling too. Like just it was in the in the middle of the week, essentially the beginning of the week. So that takes time away. You're out of a rhythm, and then plus you're sick. Oh yeah, I, I could imagine that had been rough because I had a rough time when I came back trying to catch up with work and everything. I couldn't imagine being sick during that time as well. You know. Yeah, it was not uh, not ideal. And I will say, dude. So that what that would have been Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So like four days, I will have gone without playing pickleball. Literally feels like an eternity. It's uh, crazy. <laughs> you're like scratching at your neck. No, oh, gosh. Shivering, no, for shaking. real. I'm like, <laughs> all I've hands. had to do the last few days. What? Let me see. Sh- sh- show your hands to the audience. Is, is it shaking? Is it shaking? <laughs> <laughs> it's quivering in it's, his shoes, guys. When he steps on the pickleball court, that's how. That's what it's like when he when he steps on the court. When I'm on the other side, he's like, oh my gosh, uh, it's a little. <laughs> nah, I'm like, I'll play with my left hand now. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's crazy that wait, wait, wait. Uh, four Speaking days of which, was long. Playing with your left hand, I got to play against Ben Johns left-handed, and he played on my team. We played doubles, left-handed against your brother and Braden from Pickleball Effect. That was a crazy. That was a pretty um, competitive uh, match. He body bagged your brother in like the first like two points, and I think actually you know you were there. You watched it. You were like, yeah, I ben, saw it. Ben, ten bucks if you I for, saw- <laughs> as many body bags <laughs> as you get on my brother. <laughs> I, I was really hoping he'd go for more after that. I was like, I'd hope he's just kept trying to hit him over and over. <laughs> Would have been That's so funny. Touch. But no, it was, it was good. That was really funny. Yeah. All he right. was very good with Anyways. his left hand. I was like, wow. No. Solid. He's good. He doesn't. When he says he could play 5-0 with his left hand, he's not messing around. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. All right. Next up, we have the U.S. Open men's and mix. You're going, right? Yep. Okay. So... You're not going this year? No, I I did uh, apply for the lottery. I don't think I got in. And then even if I did, I, th- I don't think I was going to go. It's just, I mean, so many things going on. But you're going. Who are you playing with? So mixed, I'm playing with someone named Etta from here. Uh, she usually plays with say, Isaac. Etta? You got Etta right on your team? <laughs> yeah, of course. You're winning. Duh. <laughs> but so playing, playing mixed with her, that'll be fun. She's a really good player. And then... Me and my brother actually didn't get in for men's until uh, back when the PPA Minnesota happened. I got an email that was like, hey, someone else didn't sign up so you can enter. So I thought this whole time I was just going to play mixed. Had to change my flight, add another day or whatever so we could play. So doing men's with Patrick and then mixed with Etta. And I think it'll be it'll be a fun time and just have a small little group of Minnesota people going. Yeah. All really fun people. So I think Dang. it'll be, You'll it'll be, be good. In like when is it? Like it's like in two weeks. Two, yeah. Weeks? Well, let's see. It's three weeks. Oh, three weeks. Okay, so it's not that close. You still got a little bit of time to prep and kind yeah. of collect yourself. All right. Yeah. Are you going to seat to table? Uh, is that even a question? I'm bringing my friends there so fast. <laughs> how many? How 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 deep are you rolling with the with the mini squad? 
Uh, we we Patrick's only going to be there for two days. He we fly in, we play mixed or men's the next day, and then he flies out the next day. So with him we'll have six. Without him we have five. Okay. All right. Good to roll yeah. in deep. No, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. The U.S. Open last year was a really enjoyable tournament. Like it was just a good vibe, and I think it's under new ownership now. And I'm curious to see what adjustments they've made. But honestly. Even from an amateur sp- perspective, I liked what it was last year. It was a very yeah, no, enjoyable it, tournament. It was fun. I like the layout. Say what's up to Nahome home for me. Is Nahome going? Do you know? Well, we were going to play if oh. Patrick couldn't go, and he didn't make it in for men. So I don't – he might still oh. show up, but I, he's not playing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, all good. All good. All right. Um, yep. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, have fun, man. Good luck at the U.S. Open. Oh, wait. Do you know? Is it uh, – like, is it a different event? Is it a, it's not considered APP event or a PPA. No, event, it's right? its own thing. Okay. And do you know any, are any pros going to that event? Or is it just Lee and her amateurs? mom are playing. Oh, really? Where are they playing? Yep. Is there a pro, is there a pro bracket there yep. or is it just yep. five O? Okay. Pro bracket. Anybody, anybody else or no? Nah, uh, I mean, there will be, I'm sure like APP pros will be there, but you're not going to see any PPA pros. I don't think unless there were some others that I'm not aware of that had some like um, clauses in their contract that allowed them to do that. I know the waters were very specific about that. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. All right. Let, let's move on to our next topic. Our primary topic. The primary. Was, yes. How does the pickleball paddle market work? So yes. I think we're just going to talk about the product or the yeah the product market like life cycle i guess you could say and kind of go over i mean maybe like the different tiers i would kind mm-hmm. of categorize it for paddles because there's a lot right how many paddles out, are out there have you checked there's over two thousand paddles on the market do you think that'll ever go down like will things become will it will it get more or will like it consolidate a little bit more sooner rather than later what do you think It will probably continue to go up for a bit, but I do think at some point it's going to have to consolidate because I think the market will get competitive enough and companies will probably have either their own factories or either their things that are more proprietary that make it a lot harder for new people to come in. Because right now, and we'll, we'll get into this more, but a lot of times like, you know, some company introduces a technology and then it just bleeds into the rest of the industry. And I think at some point, companies will either have more patents or more protection to where it's like people are not going to be able to readily copy that, which means their equipment may not be as good. And then, you know, I just don't think as it gets more competitive, you're not going to be able to start a random hundred dollar paddle brand and like make it on top. Right. Like you ever since Vatic did that, a bunch of them have done it. And there's others that are are doing well in that price range for sure. But at some point there will be too many and people are going to be like, well, it's too competitive right now. It's like, I, it's like the market doesn't know a lot of things, so it's easier to be like, hey, we're something new when it really isn't, and mm-hmm. I just don't think that can go on forever. I give okay. it three to five more years max. All right. I agree with you on that. Uh, so how would you describe the paddle like product life cycle? Like, How long is it until a refresh <laughs> of the same paddle or like a certain line of paddles um, happens again? It's about six months to a year i would say so what i've noticed in the time that i've been in the industry is like something gets introduced and then everyone just copies it so for example like electrum and them had raw carbon fiber and there was probably then carbon carbon got pretty big in that wave and then after that gen one paddles just trickled down into a million of them until they became just a basic gen one raw carbon fiber paddle is like just a a base paddle these days like it's like the low i don't want to it's not the lowest tier but it's like in that range so like Mm -hmm. for example you have like the harache control the phd professor the rhombus r1.16 volare mach 1 bison hue def baller carbon one electro model e groove and like there's way more than that that are all in the same category but those are probably some of the names people will actually know Mm -hmm. so you see that a lot. So Gen 1, we saw mm-hmm. that like uh, 20, let's see, that would have been 2022. Mm-hmm. Yep, that happened. Everyone did it. Then January hits, and Carbon was the first major company 
that we saw thermal forming in. There had been companies like Vatic, Legacy, and Six Zero that were technically out before them, but then that got popular. And then all of 2023 was just thermal who's going to get thermal forming? Yeah, everybody got it. Everybody got it. And then, yep. so it's about like a year, I would say. So, yeah, you're right. Six months yes. to a year until you see it, like basically a year for the, I guess, larger technologies to kind of flow into the market. And then six months, you might see a small little refresh or minor tweaks and changes like different surfaces. Like you might see like raw fiberglass or like the Kevlar that, that comes in, which is different, but not necessarily game changing or groundbreaking. So those are kind of like mid cycle refreshes in my opinion. Yes. Um, so yeah, so I were in the middle of, I guess a, we're certain, actually the beginning right now. I would say, yeah, we're pretty much at the beginning of what you, we've been kind of discussing a little bit, but I feel like we're about to potentially enter the era of like what we could, I think I'm, could be called gen three. I agree gen 3 so let's 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 kind of go over a little bit you know how we describe gen 1 gen 2 and what we think gen 3 will be so gen 1 is just a regular uh cold pressed sandwiched honeycomb core paddle right it just uses polypropylene in the center a couple layers of either raw carbon fiber maybe a little bit of fiberglass in there um whatever companies decide and it has an edge card around it usually if you remove the edge card, it's exposed polymer, fairly cheap, fairly light, performs, you know, pretty well, could still perform rather well. I think for the majority of players out there is probably the best paddle to kind of like pick up and play with easiest. It's like the easiest thing to get comfortable with. Right. Yes. And still a good, you know, like yeah. still a great paddle. I mean, Vatic Prism Flash, you, you could play pro with that. I mean, I actually think Augie Ga, I think he was playing with a Vatic Prism, Prism. V7. He was. Yeah, he was. So, Isn't that like a, that's kind of like a gen, like a 1.5. Yeah, I mean, it's like in in that category where there is some foam in it, but like still yeah. that price range or whatever, like just yes. because it's cheaper and we say like, oh, like it's easy to get started with does not mean you can't play high level pickleball Right, with it, it doesn't mean that it's bad or it doesn't mean that, yeah, it can't like follow you as your skills improve into higher levels you know yes um you want to talk about gen 2 then like the next generation yep. yeah so gen 2 kind of got coined as this term because it was such a and it's funny looking back because part of the issue was definitely paddles getting core crushed so that was like part of the like holy crap these are all so fast but it got coined because it was like holy cow these sweet spots are way better on these paddles the yeah. spin is really good and the power is also phenomenal so gen 2 is basically just a raw carbon fiber thermo formed paddle and really all the thermo forming means is if you took the edge guard off of the paddle on a gen one paddle you would see the core on the sides all the way around mm -hmm. on a thermo formed one there's like a carbon fiber seam that wraps the whole paddle and kind of stiffens up the whole thing and so we basically companies started doing that all over the place and some reviewers kind of just coined it as this feels like a generation two because it felt like such an upgrade from the original raw carbon fiber yeah. paddles. Like yeah. everything was better. Sweet yeah. spot spin, Sweet like better all spin. of it was. Uh, I guess like, well, if you got one that didn't core crush technically like durability, I guess if yeah. they didn't core crush, but yeah, they were stiffer. They had a little bit better feel in my opinion, more power. Most of them had, uh, I would say better spin for the most part as well some examples are you know the six zero double black diamond vatic pro flash diadem edge 18k forza mach one right uh pulsar from ronbis perseus from yola carbon one x all the moving line and then like the bread and butter filth like those are just some examples of some gen thermal two formed yeah thermal formed you know unibody paddles out there and uh let's see that kind of uh, moves us on to, well, it doesn't move it, but let's go over Gen 3 real quick. And Gen 3 is, I guess. Well, the, the tough part with this, this is actually why we need to like talk about this a little bit more, yeah. is it will be interesting to see if companies use a similar technology Concept. to yeah. achieve what we are kind of thinking of as Gen 3, because I almost feel like each company is going to have 
a different way of handling this. So I'm yeah. curious to see. It's not like Gen 2 where I think everyone will do the same thing. Right. Necessarily. I think you can still, think you can still call it Gen 3. It's just they're, they're achieving similar results, you know, in different ways. But the concepts to achieve those results are kind of similar. And essentially what it is is like foam. You know, foam is utilized some way to give the paddles a little bit more flex, um, you know, to make it more lively and to provide more power. Now, the way that different companies do that obviously is different and proprietary to how, you know, they're handling because there's different ways to do it. But yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, like Gearbox it's, and CoreTech are very different, different variants of adding foam to the core. Right, exactly. In different ways, different areas. And we don't even know. It could be different types of foam, different densities. There's so many things that can go um into it but i think you know if once like a few months happen and we see what other companies are doing um i don't know i think it's safe to say like we can kind of categorize them within the the same kind of group you know and we could call it gen 3 but yeah time will tell we'll see if i i I think uh we can officially well not officially but um uh what's the word i'm looking for like term it right just yeah. confidently term it as Gen yep. 3. Yeah. Now, something else I want to go over. There's a few things. We'll get to Kevlar in a minute here because I think that's one of the next waves that's coming. And it's not necessarily like a big wave. It's kind of like a minor tweak wave. But we'll get back to that in a second. The other thing I've seen trickle down a lot, and I laugh really hard at this one, was so obviously Selkirk introduced like this throat hole concept. Yeah. And then it took almost, I think, about a year before we started seeing these like Alibaba variants or whatever, and you've seen all sorts of different holes. Yeah. You've seen it exactly like a Selkirk. You've seen it. There's one specifically. I'm going to try and pop up an image. I have seen this shape. So many companies have made this shape. I've What's seen it, it on like? Alibaba. It's like a triangle throat hole, kind of like the alchemy, but there's two support beams inside the triangle. Oh, uh... And it's so funny because I've had companies email me this and they're like, yeah, we spent like so much time inventing this thing. And I'm like, (laughs) first of all, no, you didn't. Because I saw this like a year and a half ago before you even (laughs) submitted it to me. And it wasn't you who showed it to me. So like, Uh uh (laughs) I just that this one particular shape always makes me laugh because it's like, yeah, I've hit that paddle and it's like not great. So it's just (laughs) it's very funny to me. Um, But yeah, the throat hole, eventually that kind of trickled down into Mm -hmm. I would say more of the mid to lower tier market. Like I think the whole in terms of like some companies that are like brand new, they can kind of like get people to be like, ooh, that's cool and different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen seen it around, but I don't know if it has, I still don't think that it has any crazy benefits, you know? Yeah. Like it's still just a gimmick or it just, I mean, as long as it doesn't make it play worse, you know, I'm fine with it. Like, it, I think it kind of looks kind of cool, a little futuristic a little bit. So I don't mind the way that it looks. But as long as it doesn't make it play worse, like, I don't really care. Yep. Yeah, for so sure. Maybe it takes some weight out of it. So I guess there are there if there are benefits or there are differences, it's fairly minor, in my opinion. Definitely. So, yeah, that was just another uh, trend that I had seen kind of trickle down. But now the one that one that we're currently sitting in and you're going to see a lot of a wave this summer is Kevlar. Yes, and the Kevlar wave. In, in the face, it's a say in the face because, you know, we've had Kevlar in the core before, yes. you know, in Aramid and Nomex, but now that Kevlar kind of pattern and weave or just either Kevlar or Kevlar carbon fiber hybrid face, you're seeing that a lot. I mean, um, Pickleball Apes, as far as I know, was one of the first to come to market with it. Um, then uh, the Ruby from 6.0 has a completely all Kevlar face and then the azul is i think being released very soon i think it's on pre-order uh next week actually and that's a little different harachi i think it'll be the day after this podcast i think or the week after yeah well go to their site and get pre-ordered if you want use code pickleball will you heard it here first just kidding (laughs) code pb studio if you're smart (laughs) just kidding (laughs) just kidding okay Okay. there there's a few others too uh there's one i haven't hit with i i've seen some some ads and posts about it uh i was it mark the kinetic from yeah mark kinetic i've seen that that's one i need to probably get my hands on i know spartus is coming out with one um even the quiet two from the company uh, pickle p-k-o-l-l the spoon the one the spoon it uses it as well (laughs) 
So this has got to be one of the funniest memes to me on this podcast. The what? fact that every time we say the brand name pickle, we have to spell it because you yeah. don't know which one your people don't, aren't going to know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Well, let's no, don't make sure you, you spell check me because apparently I can't spell when I went, when we were at uh, the YOLO event, I went uh, out to go get some beignets with, um, uh, John and Natalie from Pickleball Central. I think your brother came along too, and so was Brayden. And um, I like paid uh, Natalie for the beignets, and she's like, "Oh, just Venmo me, or or, or you know, request or something Venmo." And you know, you also put put a note in when you request yeah. money. Yeah, I totally butchered beignets. Like, incredibly, like, how do you spell this? It was incredibly hard. It was so bad that she screenshotted it and then she like posted it like on her socials like roasting me and how bad the spelling was then i'm not even gonna fault you for that one because i wouldn't even know how to spell that i still don't know put out yeah so i'm not i won't even make fun of you for that because i'd have to make fun of myself too (laughs) okay okay. (laughs) but anyways but anyways uh the other ones that are coming to well mentioned spartas pickle six zero mark and then the other one that i'm aware of is 11624 they're making a kevlar yeah yeah and there's definitely other companies i know Mm -hmm. for sure other ones are working on it i've seen prototypes so it's the next seen prototypes wave hit prototypes and i mean i know uh, you made a video about it you know you're just you're very lukewarm to the kevlar you know i know you don't think it's bad it's a little different but like i would agree there's not i don't know huge benefits to it they play in my opinion they all play a a tad bit softer in my opinion the feel is a little different but for the most part it's fairly much the same i think the hype is not like warranted for what it is it's not bad and anyone who plays with the kevlar paddle like i would never tell someone like oh you shouldn't have bought that it's not anything like that but it's not something that's so different that we've like never seen it before for example the ruby the first like three times it came back in stock it sold out in less than 10 minutes each time and i was like the ruby looks amazing and the ruby is a fine paddle yeah but it's not that different from a double black diamond like why are we selling out in less than 10 minutes like i don't know it's the aesthetics man i'm telling you it's the looks because it's very striking and that's what it is people want the paddle because it looks cool looks cool i mean I, I will say with the kevlar that is one of the biggest things is we've you know traditionally we've not had color in the face of like raw carbon fiber paddles so it does stand out i get it but yeah, i've just been kind of shocked with the whole kevlar craze and i'm curious if a year from now if kevlar yeah. makes its way in to be like a dominant thing or if it was kind of just like oh yeah kevlar was cool last year you know what i mean yeah i think it's i, th- I personally think kevlar is here to stay i think it's here to stay you know, okay. there there might be some other um, innovations with it. We'll see. Maybe they combine it with, you know, another layer of something. I don't know. What if you saw like Kevlar? I mean, probably won't have Kevlar, like fiberglass or something. I don't know. I'm just tossing I stuff I wouldn't out there. be surprised if that's how some of these are working. I've been a bit confused. I keep hearing about some of these like carbon Kevlar or full Kevlar like power paddles now. And I'm like, Either it's something with the core, or maybe there's a fiberglass layer underneath. Yeah. I I don't know what's contributing to the power yet, but I am, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a thing, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything, I mean, like kind of like your next topic here, like, you know, companies, they take these things and they vary the same technology, like a little differently, right? Not everything is, I guess, a clone, but a lot of things are fairly similar, you know? Yeah. And... Like you said, some companies put in more effort than others. They try different things, or maybe their marketing is just different. Speaking of which, did you see, um, like uh, Doug from Bread and Butter, he posted up the the mockups and kind of like the the marketing material for his new paddle, the Shogun, yeah, or whatever. I did. It's gonna be, uh, was it uh, carbon fiber and titanium? Titanium, like yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I that's the first that I heard of that. We'll see if that makes any difference if it plays any differently at all. But I thought the name of the paddle and the marketing material was pretty tight, pretty dope. So Imagine it's good and actually worth some hype and all these companies are just like, dang it. What am I, I supposed to do it. with all these Kevlar paddles? <laughs> <laughs> now Everybody it's titanium. titanium. Oh man. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, yeah, that I think that's a big thing people need to understand with the paddle market. So a lot of things in pickleball for the most part can be grouped into categories. Like, 
We went over the Gen 1, then we went over the Gen 2, and a lot of those paddles are going to play very similarly. Like, if I go back up to the list here, like, the Harache Control, PhD Professor, Ronbus R1.16, and, like, let's just say the Carbon 1. Those paddles, they they will play a little bit different. The weight, the balance of things, and maybe how the handle is shaped, it's going to feel a little different to you, and you'll have a preference one way or another. Mm -hmm. But they are not so different that it's like, man, I really messed up because I bought the Harache Control over the Ronbus, right? Like, yeah. They're in the they're same, the same tier. ballpark. Yeah, the same tier. I mean, yeah. That's why we called the Gen 2. We're called the Gen 2 tier, you know? Yep. And so, so yeah. one of them might make a handle size, like grip thickness that fits you better. Like maybe one is thinner mm -hmm. and that makes you lean that way or maybe one weighs less. But it's not going to be because you're like, man, the tech of this one's so different. Like they're all in that same category. Yeah. No, I would completely... Agree with you. Completely agree with you. Yeah. All right. So just be aware that, you know, while there are a lot of um, very similar paddles, there's usually something small that differentiates them. And then, again, some companies do put in more effort than others. Like, if you – you can kind of just tell. Like, if there's a brand-new company and you go to their website, you can kind of just tell the ones that went to Alibaba and were like, oh, pickleball is an easy sport to make money in. Because you look <laughs> at their marketing or what they're talking about, and you're like, yeah, you don't even – you don't even know what you're writing. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is if, you know, you see a bunch of marketing fluff, it probably is. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and there's going to be some overlap, right? There's so many paddles out there, so some of them are going to play very similar. Um, yep. So you're going to see some overlap. And, uh, you know, that kind of brings us to our next topic. We're going to go over some alternatives to some popular paddles that you might see out there. And these alternatives, we tried to find some alternatives that were – I guess for the most part, a little bit cheaper in price um, or that play similar, but you know, not all. Some of these are kind of close in price, but we tried to find some. Um, and obviously some of these paddles we think we see a lot of, but you know, you and I, Chris, we, we travel a lot. We go to a lot of places. So I don't know. The paddles that we see a lot of might not be the same paddles that you out there listening might see a lot of in your area, but these are just some of the ones that we're going to go over. So first off, we have... The Yola Perseus. Yes. Pretty popular paddle, I would say. Um, I see a lot of the 16s. I don't know if you do you see the 14 at all. No, it's mostly 16. It's mostly 16. Yeah. So, I mean, some some of the ones that kind of came to mind for me, um, I chose the Groovin' Movin' 16H and the Varus paddle from Cliff. You know, elongated handle, kind of thermoform, plays a little bit softer. Um, I'd probably toss, like, the Thrive Threat in there as well. You had a pick for that as well yeah which was it i've heard about this one but i haven't personally hit it so you can take this one with a big grain of salt because i'm potentially trusting what other people have said on the internet but it's a company called picklin it's either p-i-c-k-l-i-n or p-i-c-k-l-n I, I can't remember how it's spelled but anyways a lot of people were saying it's similar to a perseus um mm -hmm. for a cheaper price but i personally of the ones you listed i think the varus is probably the Closest, closest i think so. of I think the you're ones true. off top of my head yeah the only thing is the grip circumference is really large on cliffs so be aware it's 4.5 inches a lot of women probably aren't going to love that um but it is a cheaper potential alternative to a perseus that's yeah, you know plays fairly probably going to be in the ballpark true shout outs to cliff shout outs to cliff pickleball okay next up we have the carbon 1x a pretty popular paddle definitely very popular when it first released in the beginning of 2023 one of the first thermoform paddles um and uh and the alternative is one of my favorite paddles it's the filth from yep. Doug from bren butter so comes in a few different colors i think the design is pretty cool but yeah that's i mean even in, in your first look or review that you had you're like dude this is essentially a clone of it yeah, this is of this list. This might be one of the most closest, like literal, cl like same shape, similar weight range, like plays very similar. These two are so similar that I really think you could go either way and, you know, you'll be fine. So, yeah, for sure, that one was the most obvious comparison and cheaper. All right. You want to go over the next paddle? Yeah, next one. And not that this paddle is hugely popular anymore, but if you, I guess, were considering it. And I'll also throw this in here. So Volaire Mach 1 um, is like 
the 140 Gen or 130. I actually think the price has changed a bit, but the Rhombus R1.16 is like literally the same exact paddle. When I did my review, like if you watch it, if it's just go watch it, you'll understand better. But like <laughs> that would be an obvious alternative. And also both of those, the mm -hmm. Volair Mach 1 and the Rhombus, I would say are good alternatives to the original carbon one. Oh yeah, you're right. That's that's true. The original carbon one that's non-thermoform. Yeah, I would agree as well. All right, next yep. up we have the Gearbox Pro Power, and we don't. There's have not really an alternative, <laughs> not one yet. But just wait for the rest of this yeah, year. Yeah, sure someone's coming up with something similar. I'm sure something will come out. Uh, I just I wanted to put this in the list because I know someone was going to be like, "Why didn't you put the Gearbox in there?" And it's because, well, it is its own thing. There's just it nothing like thing. the Gearbox. Yeah, at least not right now. And even if there was something that you know had similar performance, I feel like it would not be the same because that thing is thin and like the core is just you know designed differently. So yep. yeah. All right. Next up, we have a very popular one, which is the six zero double black diamond. Um, to your paddle of choice for a while, Chris. I know it's a pretty popular around everywhere. Uh and uh, we picked the Harache X. That's the one you play yep. with right now. It's a little bit different shape. So you said the Harache yep. has a little bit more power. And I would, I guess, agree uh, because obviously it's just a longer paddle. So maybe a little bit higher swing weight. So it would, in theory, generate more power. In my opinion, the Harache X was not that much more powerful. If it was at all, I really couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, very similar, but at a cheaper price, I would say control centric or control leaning maybe all court leaning to me leaning control i would say the harache um, yeah that's how i like because it's because that's how i categorize the double black diamond like at least now maybe before like a, like six months ago or something i would say it's i don't know i would i guess like i'm trying to think harache like, x is definitely like all higher end of all court higher end of all court so you would you categorize that as a power paddle like like or all court leading towards power leaning towards power but not because of paddles like the gearbox it doesn't like hit the power paddle realm yeah that's what i'm saying like but before like let's say before the gearbox came out and like the paddle tech from annalee waters came out right you know we didn't the bar the goalposts weren't moved to power that heavy but now that yeah, they, yeah, those yeah. exist right everything else that we thought was powerful now seems like you know, all not court. as powerful for or sure. Not as powerful. Like those, like imagine six, six months to a year from now, like those paddles now be considered control. Like and that would be crazy if the gearbox was ever considered a control paddle. No, no, no. I meant, I meant the other. One. I meant like that would be oh, crazy. The, but I like the Harache, the Harache, and like the double bar, like like strictly a control paddle. Like you know, that'd be crazy. Yeah, that'd be crazy too. Okay. Um, I also put in another one. I hit a loco. Um from bread and butter very similar shape i think it plays a little softer than the double it's black definitely diamond. softer for sure yeah uh, but it's a very similar shape very maneuverable similar to it i would say all right next up uh the vanguard control honestly you could probably pick a few like gen one raw carbon fiber paddles to i guess you know replace this but the one that i chose was by a smaller brand called a11 a the number 11 and the letter N, C7. It has a very similar shape, and it's raw carbon fiber, sandwich, you know, exposed polymer. Um, if you took off the edge guard, just like a Gen 1 paddle. And I'd say that's pretty similar in my opinion. Yeah, I've never hit that one, so I'm just going to have to take your word on oh, yeah. that one. Take my word for it. Take my word for it. All right, what's the next on the list, Chris? Next one, uh, Selkirk Lux is pretty hugely popular. And while I never got to spend a lot of time with it, uh, one that was compared to a lot last year was the Spartus Ballista. It does have a very similar um, throat hole. Uh, it's edgeless. I've heard it's it leans on the control side. It's definitely cheaper than a Lux. And then another one on top of that, which n no one's really gotten a review yet, the Gamma Airbender is yeah. $50 cheaper than the Lux and definitely in a similar category with a raw carbon fiber face. Now it is $250 if you decide to get the butt cap weights and the weight insert for the hole. But if you don't do that, it is cheaper. And those two, I think, are definitely good alternatives to consider if you're yeah. looking at a Lux and it's just clearly out of your budget. Yeah, or you wanted something that also has raw carbon fiber. I think that Gamma Airbender is a pretty decent alternative. I think the only person I know that made a review video on that 
is Jordan Brionis. I think he has one out on it. I didn't watch it yet, though. On the Ballista? No, not on the Ballista. On the Airbender. Oh, his oh did he do one, one on the Airbender? I must have missed I, it. I think he did one on the Airbender. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Two more. Um, Volir Forza Mach 2. So this is the wide body, like, thermoformed uh, offering from Volir. Um, you picked the Pickle Hurricane Pro. P-I-K-K-L. <laughs> this is the one that Hurricane Black, uh, Tyra Black uses. Uh, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, very similar shape. I haven't gotten to hit it a lot. I do think from very early just screwing around in like my office, I think the Hurricane Pro might be a little bit poppier, okay. uh, but it's very similar shape, like same style handle. Like if you put them up super close um, in shape. So yeah, I yeah. think those, and I think it's a little bit cheaper. I think it might be $20 cheaper. And then with a code, it might be even uh, a little cheaper less. Yeah, uh, my pick for that uh, a replacement for that is the move in 13 S and 16 S um, just from Groovin from Groovin. Yes. They're just shorter wide body, except they have a more circular rounded off uh, face shape. And while the Forza Mach 2 comes in 14 and 16 millimeter, the move in 13 S and 16 S comes in 13 millimeters and 16 millimeter core thickness, respectively. Um, very similar. And uh, those are ones to check out. Those are some of my, I think favorite like, shorter square body type of paddles you know what i just realized we did wrong i'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind this a little bit <laughs> that's my rewind noise <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> instead of those being the alternative to the volaire forza mach 2 what this actually should have been i don't know why this is just now hitting me it should have been all three of those paddles we just listed including the volaire forza mach 2 is the alternative to the yola scorpius that is good do you okay okay yes the yola scorpius okay because so. 250 uh, you know pretty popular paddle and there's nothing wrong with it like if yeah. you and it is different i'm not these are not again not all of these are one-to-one -one comparisons some of these are close some of these are a little bit more of a stretch like the move in compared to like the valer forza gonna be a little bit different in how they play but um, in terms of good, more budget comparisons to like a Scorpius, those are all good options. Yes. No. Yeah. I, I think, I think you're right. Totally agree. So if you're a Scorpius kind of shape user, you got options. You got options. Yeah. All, all right. right. Last one. We have the Yola Hyperion and this, the most obvious choice popular? to me. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, there's a guy in my league that he only buys Hyperion still, but he keeps breaking them. Uh, the handle? Is it the handle still breaking? I actually think he... Handles probably been a few, but he's. I feel like he's told me the core, which I'm like, okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I haven't checked his to see if that's the case. Okay, all right, fair enough. But anyways, enough. the alternative, the Vatic Prism Flash or the V7. Yeah, I think I would probably pick the V7 closer to the Hyperion than the than the Flash version. I, it's like tough just, because. It's like the Hyperion is elongated and the Flash is not, but the Flash matches the curved head of the Hyperion. Yes. It's like... <laughs> you, 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 you could kind of go either or, but I, I feel like yes. the, the V7 uh, version, the V7 Flash is head heavier, right? Yes. It's a higher swing weight, a swing weight that's more similar to the Yola Hyperion. So that's yep. why I would pick the V7 over that as the alternative. Yep. Yeah. And the All Prism's right. a lot cheaper, a whole lot cheaper. It's like at least a hundred dollars cheaper yeah a hundred dollars cheaper all right yeah. well, there you have it some uh paddle alternatives uh code pickleball will code pb studio <laughs> i'll be i'll be watching the codes i'll be watching will's codes to see who used your code and then i'm gonna send him a message and be like <laughs> oh, wait, why do you that. hate me <laughs> <laughs> how do you see my you, you can't see the people using my code how do you do that <laughs> Well, you think I don't see these things, but I see everything. Oh, I see okay. everything. <laughs> yeah, except for the balls that travel, you know, it, above 20 miles per hour at you because you just jump at it. You close your eyes, you know. So we don't talk see. about those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, moving on. We've made it to the kitchen. Just had a few quick topics wanted to talk in here this week. Well, I had to laugh. Why? I was thinking about this. Remember the whole, can you tell me? what you recall from memory, why everyone wanted the merger to happen. Like, what was the main reason we wanted that to exist? 
to have all the top players playing each other. Like, so you could yes. have the best product, better competition. Yes. Yes. Because there were people playing, PPA players couldn't play MLP, APP players, or PPA players couldn't play APP. Like, everything was super segregated, right? And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, this sucks for the best product. Well, then the merger was happening. It was like, we're going to fix this. And then the merger got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. Push back. Push and here back, we are. It's back. finally getting signed. Okay, cool. But now it's still all sorts of messed up because there's been all this news about how, like, Riley, the way his contract is structured, he's not incentivized to play PPAs anymore. And who knows how many he's going to play. And then, like, the mm. Johnson family, their contracts got messed up. So now they're out here playing APPs the and Johnson they've missed a five. few PPAs. Yeah. The Johnson yeah. five. And it's like, it's still all. And also there's people signed to MLP who like, again, they may not have huge incentives to play some PPAs. Like it's all screwed up still. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they're going to be able to fix it anytime soon. Like I just, <sighs> the irony of that was so funny to me that we just went through like seven months of, MLP and PPA bleeding money mm -hmm. to what we thought was like a more like fix it. Everyone gets to play. And now yes. still kind of in the same problem. Yep. Same problem is probably even more complicated now than ever. Right. Like because of I, I'm assuming that the reason why we don't have them completely merged together is because, you know, when during the tour wars, right, they were signing different contracts and the terms of each of their contracts were different. And, Yep. We don't know the lengths of those contracts or the terms. So it might be a mishmash and a hodgepodge of players attending certain events for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love it. Pickleball, it's <sighs> always a mess. Pro pickleball, there's always a story of something it's, ridiculous it's going too on. Too much to follow, man. I can't do it. It is. I will say some of it is it was even getting tiring for me where I was just like, man, I'm just trying to play some pickleball and review some yeah. paddles. <laughs> okay anyways i had a question for people in the audience if you guys know anyone or if you specifically have built a home court i don't know that this is happening this year i feel that the odds are going to be slim but we're looking into buying a house now may hey. potentially get one this summer i don't really know yet but we're starting the process of looking and a court is very important to me because it would make my work a lot easier. So if anyone has advice on the whole process, I don't care what it is. Like if you're like, you should use these fences or here's the dimensions you should have to have it playable. Like I want it all. If someone's got that information, I would love to hear it. Like I saw uh, one tip. I'm trying to remember. I think it was they were saying you want the court facing north and south yes. and not east and west. Yes. And I was like, I wouldn't have thought about that. I mean, maybe I would have when I started happening, but I was like, that's good to know. So if you guys have stuff like that, I would really like to know it because it'll just help me know, like, as I'm looking at these houses, does the backyard have the dimensions for this? Can it go north and south or does it have to go east, west? Like, I'd love to hear it. So hit me with it if you've got connections for that. Okay. All right. Yep. Help Chris out. I'll be over for the, you know, housewarming party or housewarming tournament, whatever you know, you want to dude, call that it. would be, dude, yeah. how sick would it be if that what, does happen? I, you, you does Braden, happen? John, everyone flies to the <laughs> house. Yo, what, what do you mean is if that happened? That's going to have like, what? <laughs> you, well, are you kidding me? It's it's dependent on if I get a house and if I build a court. <laughs> OK, well, I mean, if those first two things, you know, go through, then like, yes, is 100%. We're coming over to do a housewarming tournament for sure. Are you kidding me? That would it's... be sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Heck okay. Yeah, I like the way it. you think. I like oh, that. Shoot. Yeah. This is why you have me, man. These, these great true. ideas. Yes. That's yes. true. <laughs> All right. Do we have enough time for this next topic or should we switch it? Or should we save that topic for another episode? Now nah, let's do it. Well, I don't think this will take us too long. Okay. So, you know, we we're talking about the merger and the MLP draft is happening soon and i always thought about building like the perfect pickleball player like if you chose the shots the attributes you know the mentality of the pool of pro players right now like which attributes would you choose from you know each player you know so i don't know where should we start i guess let's just go through like the shots for like let serve we'll go serve return maybe third shot drive a third shot drop 
and then okay. kind of go from there. Let's yeah? do this. So we'll say serve. Do okay. you have your person already? I have mine. You have yours already? Ooh. Yep. Okay. I have like two. But yeah. Pick one. Got, pick one. Okay. I think Yeah. I, I think I have my person. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Mine's Deckel. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Mine was Deckel. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. That's good. We'll see how okay. many we line up on. This will be good. Okay. All right. Return. This Ooh, is return. Yeah. Uh, man. Ooh, that's kind of tough. I have not. Don't feel like I often pay attention to the pros returns. returns. Hmm. I'm, I, I have my person in my mind, and it's not necessarily like because I watch them and I like, and, and I mean, I do like their returns, but it's because I've heard about them, talk about it in the theory behind it, at least more so than, it, consider it kind of like more recency bias, if anything. So I kind of have my person. Okay, I have mine. Mine's kind of a cop out, but mine's Ben. Yours is Ben. That's a that, that's that's a good pick. That's a good good pick. I was gonna pick Zane. He like oh okay. Zane was kind of up there too. Like I mean on the serve and there's because his mentality for the serve is like okay you got to go big and his return yeah like, when he thinks about it, he's like yeah I'm going big for my return as well so he takes more more risks you know so yep and he's pretty good on both wings so return okay let's do third shot drop first and then we do third shot oh. drop I think those have to be different I think those have to be different third shot drive and drop for sure have to be different okay. Do you have your third shot drop? Oh, man. Hmm. Who would I pick for this? This is tough. I almost, I, I have, I, oh, man. Hmm. Let me think. Let me just run through some pros in my head really quick. I I mean, I think I have one, but. I, okay. Do you? Yeah. It's like between Who's two yours? people. Mine, Who's yours? like, and they're, they're kind of flip flop. Mine is um, uh, like Catherine Parento. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I just, like I was going to, she moves. Go ahead. And yeah, I just like the way she moves into it and the way she, like, kind of uses her legs and her body. And I don't know. I, I almost feel like she rarely misses that shot. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't see it that often. Mine was just going to be Ben because I couldn't think of anyone better. And again, it's like, <laughs> He has to hit so many drops. Have you ever seen Colin hit a backhand drop? Maybe once in your life. Yeah. Well, Col Colin was my other person for drops, but I mean, I don't know. I might save him for like, I think I would choose him for like resets, you know? Yeah. And Catherine Brink Agreed. also potentially for resets as well. Those, those two. So now, for who's your drive? I've got mm. mine. You got yours? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Who do I see dry? Like, because like, do I when I think about it, how do you see a lot of third shot drives? Like in yeah, it feels like a lot of third shot drives these days, and then fifth this shot drives. This is true. Drop. This is true. This is true. Okay, ah oh, man, I don't. It's between like two people, and I don't. All know. right, I've I've got mine. Okay, go. M mine's Thomas Wilson. Thomas Wilson. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thomas Wilson. Um, uh, mine was gonna be uh, Tyson. But I don't know if he drives it that much anymore. Just I, I was like, who has a good drive? And I was like, okay. The first person came in mind was like Tyson. Yeah, that's who I would choose. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do two and a backhand. Two and a backhand? Okay. I already have. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to do the same answer. Are you, you ready? You think so? Well, like, we'll see. Could... Okay. I mean, there's a couple people. It's, it's tough. There's, this one's really tricky, but I think I know who I'm picking. Okay. You think you know who you're picking? All right. Yeah. You Ed, mine would be Connor Garnett. Okay, mine is Connor as well, but a very close second would be Onik. Yes, and also Annalie. Yes, Annalie, but I I would choose Annalie for some other shots. I think. Okay, but Annalie okay. is up there. So as what's well. what's next shot okay, on the let's list? Let's do let's do left hand. Let's do left hand dink, and and then we'll do forehand dink. All right, so let's go left. Wait, hand. left like, hand left as side. in backhand dink? Let's let's go. Yeah, back. Let's go backhand dink. Yeah, call backhand dink. Oh man, I already, have, I already have mine. Like I'm, I'm just saying a dink. When we say dink, I'm not saying like a roll or anything. Like so, you know, you could have because there's you're you know, just there's saying nuance. like just a good backhand dink. It doesn't have to be like two handed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Doesn't have man to have with it. how quick you have your answer, it makes me feel like I need to think about mine harder because oh, you really? feel so confident. I don't feel <laughs> confident about any of mine. Uh, okay. 
Hang on, let me, hmm, man, good. I mean, again, I feel like Ben ne does never miss that shot, so well, I don't know who ben, else to pick. Ben was my answer. Like for just Okay, well, I don't feel bad about that then. Okay, all it's right. It's too easy go. to pick Ben for all these when he's the best player. That's that's true. Okay, what about just the, your regular like, forehand dink? Okay, I, if it was me, I would again pick Thomas because I love his forehand top spending. Oh, uh, okay. I, I actually, this is one that I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it. It's just, you know, cause it's, it's very nuanced. Like we, we could just say like, be, all right. So back to the left hand dink. If I said like a two hand it, or if I say someone who has a top spin dink, you know, yeah. from the left side, I'd pick Annalie Waters, like, or, or mm. maybe James Ignatowicz, you know, sure. they have, that I crazy thought about James, top spin, you know, um, even also, Federico. Colin would be a good forehand pick. Yeah, you're right. Colin. Colin would be a good one. Like, I would say Federico. And also, I kind of like... Um, um, I'm going to say I kind of like uh, Dylan Frazier. Even Georgia Johnson when yeah. they play right side as well. They're just steady in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, now it's getting tough because, like, you know, you see some of these these shots, you know, and they're they're nuanced, but they're kind of... They overlap. You know what I yeah. mean? All right. Let's, let's talk about... Let's talk about hand speed. Ooh, hand speed. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think I... Hand speed, we'll, we'll do like pick. flick. We'll say hand speed also encompasses flicks, rolls, that sort of thing, yeah. just to make it easier. I'm... You have yours? Yeah. I'm going to say JW. Yeah, me too. JW is JW. Yeah. All right, we're, we're lining up on a lot of these. I like yeah, it. I would say JW. Might we, not be we, as interesting for the viewer, but... <laughs> well, I mean, I think if we went... If we had... Because... We did it. We're doing this off the cuff, but we had time to think about it. And we got more like granular with like, let's say yeah. who has the best backhand roll or flick, yeah. you know, overhead, like it would be a little bit more. Maybe we'll, we'll revisit this topic later on in the future. It'd be very interesting to see. I would be very interested to ask some pros this question, you know, Ooh. to see what they think because they, they play against each they other play all the time. All. Exactly. Right. And we can only go with what we've seen and we don't watch them all the time and we don't play against them. Right. Um, Okay, what right. if you were what if you're just like pure athleticism? Like singles, oh, doubles. Singles, doubles, athleticism. I think I have my person. Oh man, there's like man. three that that. Yeah, I know through. there's like three that I'm three or four that I'm torn between. Yeah, there's Okay, who is who is yours? Okay. Um should, should we list like all three like in a in a row? Like, do do your first one and then we'll go from there. Okay, my first one. Okay, Xiaomi. Okay, Jame was one of mine. I I want I think it's just because I have so much fun watching him, but I wanted to put Thomas there because I just he's just all over the flipping court. Like he doesn't yeah. play singles, but doubles, he's just everywhere. Yeah. But then my others would have been Christian Alshon. Yes. And then Christian Jame would have been lower. one of them. Annalie Waters and then, is up there for me. Yeah, for sure. Annalie Waters. For sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, it's hard to pick. There's a lot. Yeah, Fed's they're good. so yep. athletic. Like, I mean, you're talking about athletic. I'm really just thinking about like, I'm thinking about movement, you know. And I just feel like Jame, Fed, and Lee Waters, um, are some of the best mover. Like, you know, they just get to everything, you know. Yeah. But also, you could kind of put Ben up there. He's so efficient with his movement up there. Like, you know, it's. I know. Of... It's, again, when you go granular, <laughs> it gets so hard to, like, right. whittle this down. Right. Especially if you started going, like, shot by shot. Because if you're going, like, two handed backhand volley, I'm like, okay, well, just, like, you yeah. have, like, a, just an army of women to pick from. Yes. Yeah. Got, like, still... Anna Bright. You've got Anna Lee Waters. Like, you just got so many. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. I want to sit down and actually think about this one time. It'd be very interesting to kind of do this experiment. Okay. All right. Is, is I think we can other... both agree on who the lob is. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. I, I, his face is in, but my name is wrong. But it Callan is Dawson. Callan Dawson. Callan Dawson. <laughs> yes. The lobster. <laughs> the trying to think doctor. what other shot. Are we missing anything else? Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, we already said, I mean, forehand drive, backhand. I mean, do we do forehand drive? We did backhand drive. Do we? 
I can't remember. We did backhand. I mean, drive. we just did two and a backhand, which I think encompassed the drive. Yeah, but who does? Yeah, well, we can do one handed backhand. I mean, from the baseline, who no almost no pros at the top. I mean, that, singles right? though. Yeah, single. Yeah, you still see see it. Who does it? Who's notable that does one handed backhand drives and singles? No, no, not one. Oh, sorry, I was thinking two handed. Oh, okay. One handed Jay was like the last standing hope, and now he's even using two. Yeah. I don't think anybody else used to. It's it's really funny to see that the two-handed backhand just kind of took over. Like it started with the women's side, and now it takes over the men's side, and you rarely see the one-handed backhand. Yeah, you might see a resurgence in it with these paddles getting better, and like you can lift more. But it's so hard. It's so much easier to get topspin and lift the ball with two hands than it is with one to get that topspin you're looking for. You know, because you need yep. that roll. You know, totally. I think that's interesting. Kind of. I think that's kind of it. And you know, it's fun. like I, this person just came to my mind because like, if I made a perfect player, I would use his attributes, but we didn't really pick a category, but like, um, when it comes to like deception, you know, and maybe like resets Ooh. or soft touch, like deception. Do you have somebody for that? No, not off the top of my head. I feel like there's probably an obvious one I'm missing. I mean, he's kind of obvious, pick? but he's also not as obvious. It was Jack Monroe. Oh, yeah, I, his stuff down. on Instagram cracks me up. Dude, when I played against him for the first time, I was like, what am I seeing? It's just because he's ambidextrous. He uses both hands, left hand and right hand, and he has both his hands on the paddle almost at all times, and he can just switch to his left hand to reach or his right hand, and then he'll Kyle Yates you with two hands on the paddle yeah. on both sides. It's nuts, you know? There's no idea where the ball is going. And I think there was also... Uh, um. My gosh, his name is eluding me right now, but he's a little bit of an older player. And his player. name is John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's not coming to my mind right now, but yeah, those are some attributes I think that would make a really good pickleball player. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It would be fun to see if that existed. Okay. Well, maybe you know, in a future video game where you know you build your player, you can choose their stat line. <laughs> You know, dude, my player versus your player. Oh, <laughs> but it, it's almost the same. <laughs> well, almost... we would just have to make it. A little, we'd have to get granular. Okay, you're right. We'd have to get granular. We'd have to go granular. <sighs> oh, that's too funny. That's right, too cool. funny. Well, that's pretty much all I got, man. You got anything else yeah. you want to talk about? No, that's everything for me. All right, cool. Well, hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Later.